With us now is a very special guest, Michael Reagan, the son of the late President Ronald Reagan. In addition to being a Republican strategist, he is the head of the Reagan Legacy Foundation. And Michael, as always, it's so good to have you with us. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, Republicans have been doing a lot of soul searching in the wake of the loss of uh, the presidential election and also no net gains and, in fact, losses in the Senate. Mm -hmm. There's been talk about moving to the center, bending on taxes, softening on immigration. Is all of this an overreaction in your view? Well, I don't know why they're surprised about what happened, you know, last Tuesday. It was a surprise to a lot of people when you have a message that isn't inspirational, that doesn't really reach out and be inclusive, uh, then don't expect people that you're not talking to to come out and vote for you. You've got to be able to reach those people. So you've got to have a message to find your message before you do anything else. Just simply capitulating and giving in on this or giving on that is not going to make you a good candidate. You've got to learn to have a message of inclusion and one of inspiration is going to bring people to you in the next election. So what should that message of inclusion be? How does the party reach out to African-Americans, Latinos, Asians? Listen, I just got done speaking, you know, at a, at a function here in West Palm Beach. Great function, great people. You know, and I said, would please, would all the African-Americans in the room please stand? Nobody stood. The only blacks in the room were serving me coffee. When I say, hey, all the Hispanics, please stand, about two people show up. Where are they? They're doing the flowers out front. You know, if, if you're not going to be engaged within those communities 24-7, don't expect those communities to come forward on election day. Ronald Reagan was the last person to bring in the Hispanic vote. Why? Because he was inclusive. He had a message of inclusion, found areas of agreement. We have a great you know, Hispanic governor in New Mexico. We have a great governor in, in Nevada, Hispanic, but you never see him on the campaign trail. I, I, I would be going to people like that saying, you know, your state's 75% Democrat, 25% Republican. How'd you get elected as a Republican? What was your message? We don't do that. We don't do it at all. Until we do, we're going to lose. Now, the media has been suggesting that Republicans lost the election because the party put, to, put forth too many Tea Party candidates, that the party pushed that agenda. Um, what do you make of that statement? Well, th listen, there were some, some of those Tea Party candidates who were fools, absolutely fools. I, I, I think that Pat Cadell said very well this morning, if you want to get in those arguments about abortion and, and, and rape and so on and so forth, go run a church. That's where, that's where you belong. And, and we do. We put some of these people forward. Ronald Reagan, it's interesting. Ronald Reagan was supported by the moral majority. He didn't reach out to them. They reached out to him. We need, need to get back to that position where you have a message where people want to reach to you. You don't have to reach into them. So what role should social issues play moving forward? Social issues, I mean, I think they're important. I get involved in social issues. But those are not the issues that unite a country. Right. What unites the country are in fact the econ economic issues. That's what unites the country. Now, I interviewed Reverend Franklin Graham earlier this week. He told Newsmax that in the aftermath of the election that America has turned its back on God. Do you agree with that? Well, you know, as my father who said, when we cease to be one nation under God, we'll be a nation gone under. A lot of people make the argument, we in fact are a nation gone under. But you can't force God on people. You've got to live a godly life. And people want to make, you know, people want to say, how do I get that? And you can sit there and tell them. My father was pro-life, but in fact supported his daughter, Boreen, who is pro-choice. Why? Because he agreed with her 80% of the time. And the person that actually got elected, he disagreed with 80% of the time. So my father understood the art of negotiation. We now belong to a party that doesn't want to negotiate. Now, your father also championed smaller government mm -hmm. and lower taxes, the opposite of what President Barack Obama stands for. Does his presidential win mean that Americans want a big government nanny state? I mean, is no, that the what direction it, we're what moving What it means in? is that Mitt Romney and the Republicans didn't run a campaign where they even talked about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the things. You could run a campaign and put a candidate together to talk about all the things we didn't talk about in the campaign and that we just stayed mum on and quiet. You can't have a campaign, well, I'm gonna create 12 million jobs. How are you gonna do that? Well, I've done it before, I'll do it again. You have to, have, you have to be inspiring to people. That's what you need to be, and, and our candidate truly wasn't inspiring, but that wasn't his fault. And I get really tired of conservatives saying, well, the mainstream media really picked Mitt Romney. You had eight conservatives running against the moderate. 
Did they not think the conservatives would split the vote amongst themselves? Which is exactly what they did, which allows a 30 percenter to win the primaries and win the nomination. So quit whining about the mainstream media. Ronald Reagan never had the, the mainstream media on his team, and yet he was able to win. Why? He had a message of inclusion, and he went above and over their heads. That's what we need to do. All right, let's talk about former CIA Director General David Petraeus, who recently stepped down after admitting he had an extramarital affair. Subsequently, we learned of General John Allen's flirtatious correspondence with the Florida socialite. Uh, President Obama has kept him in charge of Afghanistan. What is the cost of the Petraeus scandal on America? I don't think people are surprised that generals are having sex with people. I, mean, I, just, I just don't. I mean, we're, we're, we're covering the sexcapades of General Petraeus more than we're covering Libya and Benghazi, where we have people actually dead. Uh, and, and I think, again, it's really interesting that the right always gets blamed for being in the bedroom, but the left lives there. Maybe it's time for them to get out of the bedroom. All right, well, let's talk about the Take Back Our State ballot initiative, which you've mm -hmm. been advocating for. Update us on where things stand with the initiative. Uh, what we're going to do is Shannon Grove and I, she's Assemblywoman from Bakersfield, and I are going to re-up it for the 2014 campaign mm -hmm. in, in California, get it on the ballot for 2014. And what we're doing is we want to take the state back to a part-time legislature, which it was, where people that represent you actually have to have jobs. So they're not making money from me. They're actually, you know, having jobs, so they have to live under the laws that they pass. 43 states have it. California had it until 1967. Take it back to it. Michael, last question. The Reagan.com mm. email, how's that going? Uh, that's going, you know, it's going great, going very well. It's the only conservative email service out there. Uh, we don't support Pelosi, Reid, and Obama. Uh, if you have AOL or Yahoo or any one of these, they're taking your information, selling your information, forming political action committees, and giving it to the Democrats. Why? And why are we conservatives supporting, you know, we said we don't want Barack Obama, but our email address we're getting for free is supporting him. So Reagan.com is there. People can go there. 40 bucks for the year. We do not support Pelosi, Reid, and Obama. And you have the greatest name in conservatism. Michael Reagan, thanks for being here. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.